are in my pocket. The thing about Grandpa is that he's always fun. We play lots of games. Three! Oh, you won again! <laughs> I certainly did. Captain we read Captain Dumble twit stories. The tennis racket sprung out of the side of the spaceship. <laughs> we share our ice cream. <laughs> we suck up our spaghetti. <laughs> and Grandpa is always like this. <laughs> That's it, Jason. I love the drawbridge. Thanks, Grandpa. And here's the last flag. One of the things I like doing best with Grandpa is making pictures. And this one was for a special reason. It was part of our plan for taking part in the Sunny Sands Sandcastle competition. That's exactly how it's going to look. A winner if ever I saw one. Well done. It's great. Great? It's more than great. It's splendiferous. Grandpa was right. Our sandcastle was going to be... the most splendiferous sandcastle in Sunny Sands. Our town is called Sunny Sands because it's always sunny and it's by the sea. We love spending time at our beach hut on the beach. And you can see the lighthouse from my bedroom window. This is Mum and Dad's bike shop, and here's Miss Smiley's Cafe, which serves the best ice cream sundaes in the world. Then there's Mr Whoops's shop, where you can buy anything and everything. Everyone loves Sunny Sands. There's just one thing more we need. Get the treasure chest, Jason. Grandpa opened his treasure chest. It's where he keeps all the things he had when he was a boy. There are rattles, and a funny monkey, toy boats and trains, and today he'd found this. A knight. We'll stick him on the top. He can be our guard. Brilliant. Thanks, Grandpa. Are we ready to go, then? Yes. Come on. Oh, this is going to be such fun. So I got into Campo with Dad and Grandpa and we set off for the beach. And Dad said... Do you need any help with the sandcastle? Only I'd like to repaint the beach hut this afternoon. And Grandpa said... Oh, we'll manage just the two of us, won't we, Jason? And I said... Of course, Grandpa. And Grandpa said... I can see the sea. to the beach and started to build our castle. And soon it was time to stand Grandpa's knight on top. Uh, right a bit, no, no, a bit more left, there, 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 that's perfect. Well, that is definitely splendiferous. Don't forget the flag, Jason. We were so busy admiring the sandcastle and deciding where to put the flag, we didn't notice that someone else had arrived on the beach. Troy! Look, Dad! What a rubbish sandcastle! We don't like this boy, Troy, much. He lives next door and he's always inviting himself round to play. He's very spoiled and he's very rude. He does things like this. I want it! No! Me! Give it to! And this. And he makes Grandpa say... That boy needs a good talking to. Troy's dad settled down and Troy said... Is this for the Sunny Sand Sandcastle competition? Yes, but it's not finished yet. It's going to look like this picture. A two-year-old could have made a better flag than that. And what's this night all about? Ha! Really old-fashioned. Grandpa wouldn't like this one bit. If we want to win, we're going to have to do it my way. Come on, we need some more shells. Wants to do it his way, does he? Well, we'll see about that. Not the shrinking cap, Grandpa! You know when Grandpa shrinks, he can get to put all kinds of magical things. Catch me if you can! He can get into my car and make it go. Grandpa, come back! 
in my plane. Not the plane, Grandpa! He can ride on Gordon, my toy seagull. <laughs> or he could just run for all he's worth. And this time he was running. Grandpa, stop it! Troy will see you! Hi, Jason! Come here or else! I didn't like leaving Grandpa on his own. But once he's got a plan in his head, there's no stopping him. Luckily, Troy's dad was busy reading his magazine. And my dad was busy stirring his paint. So they didn't see Grandpa standing the night up. Or sticking the flag back in. Grandpa, Troy's coming. What's going on? Who put all of this stuff back? It can't have been your grandpa, because he's way too old to go crawling about on the sand. Of course, Troy doesn't know what Grandpa can do when he's wearing his magic shrinking cap. Where is he anyway? Probably in the hut having one of his little lie-downs. I knew Grandpa could hear Troy being rude about him, and he wouldn't be very pleased. Ah! What's under there? Is it a crab? I hate crabs. Ah, it's going to bite me! Get rid of it! Get rid of it! No problem. While I got rid of the crab, Troy started decorating the castle his way. And soon it looked like this. Ha! How cool is that? That's not how it's supposed to look. In our picture, the shells go round. Who the... cares about your stupid picture, Jason? We're doing it my way now. I needed Troy to get out of the way so Grandpa could put the sandcastle back how he wanted it. Let's go and fetch more seaweed. I was just going to say that. As soon as we'd gone, Grandpa crept out from his hiding place and set to work. Luckily, Troy's dad was busy having a nap. And my dad was busy cleaning paint off his fingers. But Grandpa was so busy rearranging the shells, he didn't see Troy marching up the beach. So I rushed in front of him. You're in my way! I was trying to give Grandpa enough time to hide, when suddenly I heard... What was that? Not another crab! It wasn't another crab. It was Grandpa falling into the moat. I don't get it. This is weird. Troy had no idea just how weird. I was worried about Grandpa. I couldn't see him anywhere. But I could see these. The good news was, Grandpa wasn't hurt. The bad news was, he was running around the beach in his pants. Anyone want to come for an ice cream? Yes, please. You coming, Troy? Oh, no. You don't want an ice cream? I didn't like leaving Troy with Grandpa on the loose, but I had no choice. While I was gone, Troy threw the seaweed all over the top in a mess and started taking off all the shells. I rushed back ahead of Dad and was about to say something to Troy when I heard... Oh, no, you don't, young man. Ah! I am Sir Shrinkalot, and I guard Jason Mason's sandcastle. This time, Grandpa had gone too far. He'd taken the knight's clothes off and was wearing them himself. It was you! You moved the flags and changed the shells. I certainly did. This is Jason's castle and you can't expect to come marching in here and take over. I... I guess not. I had to do something. Troy was getting closer and closer to Sir shrink a lot. Jason! Jason the knight! It's... it's... It's just a toy, Troy. No! It's alive! It spoke to me and everything! <laughs> Troy, you have such a fantastic imagination. No, it really did, honest. Dad! While nobody was looking, I grabbed the toy knight. He needed to put his clothes back on. And so did Grandpa. So I rushed round to the back of the beach hut. While Grandpa was getting dressed, I put the knight back in his place. And this time, Troy didn't dare try to stop me. Wee! 
heard. Grandpa took off his shrinking cap and went back to his normal size. There you are, Grandpa. Come on, they're about to start the competition judging. And guess what? We won first prize. I knew our sandcastle was a winner, Jason. Teamwork, eh? Yes. Teamwork. <laughs> Teamwork? But you had a little lie down halfway through, Grandpa. It's a good job Troy was there to help out. Chateau Shampoo, there's Boris Boo Hoo. And Boris is too. Boris is trouble, you wait and see. But they don't care, they love to be hairy. I am so hungry. Ha, so what's new, Wiggy? Oh, hello. Guess what? Wiggy's hungry again. Oh, well, I'm the Papa Biggie driver, and driving makes you hungry. Well, I'm hungry too. Not as hungry as me, Quiff. Oh. Oof! I could eat a enormous hairy nana right now. Ah, oh, that reminds me of a story about a hairy nana. Oh, oh, yes, I remember it, I remember. If you don't know what a hairy nana is, you will now. Yeah. Well... <laughs> Nana Ha Ha was in her arty den. She'd entered the Hairyland art competition to make something hairy and funny. And she'd made this. A big hairy Nana. <laughs> well, you know what Nana's like. Nana's a Hairyland artist. Nana can draw like a dream. She can spray, she can glue. She can do collage too. And sometimes she paints with ice cream. Yes, ice cream. Nana's always laughing. But if she goes too far, she lifts off her toes and up she goes. Yes, up goes Nana. Up goes Nana. Up goes Nana. Ha ha. And you won't be surprised to know that Nana won the hairy art competition. And this was her prize. An enormous hairy paintbrush. <laughs> Nana had taken it round to show it to the Ha Ha Hairies. They were so proud of her. <laughs> yes, this was the day Nana won the hairy paintbrush prize. But up on the hill at Chateau Shampoo, someone wasn't happy. Can you guess who? Boris Boohoo, what's he gonna do? -hoo? Boris had just made some new Boohoo bubble baths, but his bubbles weren't bubbling. We were watching from our Heidi powers. Boris needed a better stirrer, but where could he find one? He looked through his hairy stairy to see if he could get an idea. And he saw the hairy paintbrush prize. Nana was tired, so decided to go back to her arty den for a nap. Oh, how Boris wanted that huge hairy paintbrush. For this. To stir his boohoo bubble bath. I think he needs a plan. Me too. 
And we were right. That's exactly what Boris needed. A plan. Boris needs a plan. A plan. He needs a plan as quick as he can. He needs a plan. He needs it quick. He needs to plan a clever trick. What'll it be? What'll it be? What'll it be? And Boris's plan was to tippy-toe into Nana's arty den. And grab the paintbrush while Nana was napping. We'd followed him on our popper picky because we knew he was up to no good. Boris tried to get the paintbrush prize off Nana while she napped. But it didn't work. So then he tried again. But this happened. He's not going to get it. Oh, I think he is. Quiff was right. Boris swapped the paintbrush prize for Nana's splashy sponge stick. Boris had done it. He'd got the hairy paintbrush. And Nana was cuddling her splashy sponge stick instead. Oh, neat. But then Boris heard Mahaha coming. He needed to hide. He put down the paintbrush and looked around for a hiding place. And he found one in the huge hairy Nana. This isn't going to end well for Boris. Oh, it never ends well for Boris. <laughs> He's in the Nana. Right inside the Nana. Ma had decided to have a party to celebrate Nana's prize, so she'd come to collect her. <laughs> Nana woke up and saw that she was cuddling the splashy sponge stick. Of course, Ma had no idea that Boris was inside the huge hairy Nana, and nor had Nana. So when she saw the zip of the Nana had come and done, Nana just zipped it back up. Then Ma handed Nana the paintbrush prize, because it had to come to the party too, of course. <laughs> and off they went. As soon as they'd gone, Boris had to get out of the huge hairy Nana. But the zip was stuck and Boris couldn't escape. <laughs> but he still wanted that hairy paintbrush prize really badly. So he set off after Nana and Ma. We decided to follow on our popper picky. Popper picky, popper picky, popper picky, picky, popper me round hairy land. I am quick and I am wiggy with, with a hairy fairy band. <laughs> Boris staggered into the hairy apple orchard. Hold tight. <laughs> he was getting tired. <laughs> Poor Boris. Poor Boris. <laughs> then Boise came along. He didn't see the huge hairy Nana until he did this. <laughs> he was confused. He put down his bat and ball. <laughs> and stood the huge hairy Nana up again. Boise looked at the hairy Nana. He'd never seen anything like it. <laughs> but then he heard a noise. A noise he recognised. Ah, it was his dad inside the huge hairy Nana. Oh, it was one of Boris's brilliant jokes. <laughs> Can you imagine finding your dad in a huge hairy Nana? <laughs> oh, shush. Boise started to try to unzip the Nana when who should he hear? It was Minnie, ha ha! Hi! Minnie was picking hairy apples for the hairy paintbrush party. And Boise's always pleased to see Minnie. <laughs> Minnie invited Boise to come to the party. And Boise never says no to Minnie. So off they went. Boise had forgotten all about Boris in the Nana. Oh dear, poor Boris. Oh, poor Boris? 
I don't think so. Oh, come on, we mustn't miss the party. Back in the Ha Ha Hairy Garden, the Hairy Paintbrush Prize party was underway. <laughs> Minnie and Boise arrived with the apples. And we arrived in the pop picky. <laughs> and Chihuahua came out of his doggy den. It was time for the party dancing to begin. But suddenly, the Ha Ha Harry saw this. They couldn't believe their eyes. <laughs> Nana's huge hairy Nana had come to the party too. <laughs> how had it got here? Chihuahua knew how. Boise suddenly remembered his dad was inside. He ran over and managed to unzip it. Out-stepped Boris. <laughs> Nana thought Boris was just joining in the fun. Good old Boris. What a joker. He'd made their hairy paintbrush prize party even better. Nana decided that Boris should join in with the hairy, hairy shake. Inside the Nana. Of course. Shake, 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 you wanna shake, you wanna shake, 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 shake. Get ready to shake, 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 shake with me. Do the hairy shake with me. Do the hairy shake with me. Do the hairy shake with me. <laughs> Boris never got his hands on the hairy paintbrush prize to stir his bubble bath, did he? <laughs> <laughs> nope. And Nana made him dance the hairy shake over and over again. Oh, yes. Poor Boris. <sighs> what is it with you and this poor Boris stuff? I don't know. Just feel a bit sorry for him, that's all. Well, you should be sorry for me, Chris, because I'm even more hungry now. Yes, I expect you are, Wiggy. Uh, can we go and find a hairy nana? No, it's too late. Oh, oh, but Chris, that huge hairy nana has made me want a hairy nana even more than before we told the story about the hairy nana. There we are, smooth as a billiard ball. Aftershave spray, please, Master Mate. He will, Captain. Some lads. Got me hat trimmed. Already, Captain. How's that sword coming on, Pirate Barnabas? Nicely, thank you, Captain. Boots, Pirate William. Hey, <laughs> shining like glass, Captain. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> I am ready then to go ashore for the Pirate of the Year contest, 1775. <laughs> That evening, the light shone brightly in the waterfront inn where the Pirate of the Year show was being held. Tom had to wait outside, but within, all was festivity and mirth. The captain was jubilant, for as it turned out, he was the only contestant, and the award was automatically his. Hardly surprising, really. <laughs> After all, it's obvious that I'm the bravest, most successful, and, of course, most handsome buccaneer afloat. Here, here. Where are we? There was, I believe, some mention of that old ruffian, Cutthroat Jake. <laughs> but no doubt, he thought better of it. <laughs> <laughs> and it therefore gives me great pleasure to accept this handsome... Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> You'll accept nothing of the kind, you old scallywag. Come on, out. All out, all of you. Except for you, Captain, and that crummy old crew of yarn. Draw your swords. We'll soon see who's 
Pirate of the Year. Come on, clear the bar. I ain't got all night. Not you. We must keep the numbers even, mustn't we? Or it wouldn't be fair, would it? Reminds me, there was some little matter of a prize, weren't there? Oh, oh, oh yes, very handsome. <laughs> In the absence of all other competitors, I hereby proclaims myself Pirate of the Year. Stay where you are. Pirate of the Year, are you? Condemned out of your own mouth. Squaw! Huh. Arrest those men. No nonsense now. That's the way. Follow me in and by the right. Quick march. And as Jake and his crew were marched off to the jailhouse, Captain Pugwash was even more pleased with himself than usual. After all, as he himself remarked, it's quite something to win the cup twice in ten minutes. <laughs> hey, my heart is. <laughs>